So if you really want to know what's happening in your body composition, we recommend getting something that's called an in-body scan or a DEXA scan. For our coaches personally, we really appreciate the in-body scan just a little bit more because it's easier to read the data. So let's kind of dive into what you'll look out for when you get an in-body scan. And an in-body scan will just give you a deeper understanding into the body composition that you are holding in your body at this period of time. What's really cool about getting an in-body scan is that as you notice your muscle mass and body fat percentage changing over time, it will actually be an indicator into whether you're getting enough protein, carbs, or fats or whether we need to get you a little bit more or reduce intake in some way. So it can be a very great baseline and I recommend doing it once every month or so. So let's kind of dive in and take a look at what it looks like in reality. So when you're going into uh, getting a body composition scan, the first thing you're gonna see is you're gonna see at the very top of the screen where it says total body of water. Now this is the water that's held in your muscle tissue and your organs. And the reason why it starts with this is because this machine is actually judging the water distribution in the body. We don't hold water in our fat tissue. We only hold it really in muscle and organ tissue. So that's how this machine can tell the difference. With that in mind, there will be some discrepancies or potential errors if we are either retaining a lot of water due to menstrual cycles, traveling on an airplane, uh, due to alcohol consumption, or if we're incredibly dehydrated. So it's really great to keep this scan consistent in terms of the environment that your body is in. We generally recommend first thing in the morning if possible, maybe an hour or so after your first meal. And when you haven't chugged a ton of water, but you're just having your natural water intake. So the next thing that you're gonna see on this is dry lean mass. So the dry lean mass is the mass that is coming from your tissue that doesn't contain any water. So this includes your dry tissue of muscle if you were completely dehydrated as a, as a vessel and also bone density as well. And then from there, we go down into body fat mass. So body fat mass is just the amount of pounds of body fat you have in your body, clear and simple. And then we have your total weight. So your total weight is a combination of the water that's held in your muscles and your organs. Uh, your dry lean mass is your skeletal system and the dry mass or tissue of the muscles and organs, and then your body fat mass. And then that is your total weight. So then as we come down, you'll see the next section, which says your muscle fat analysis. So again, your weight will be repeated and then you'll see skeletal muscle mass. So again, the skeletal muscle mass is now just showing the amount of weight on your body where the water is holding inside of the muscle without organs being included. So as previously, the total body of water was showing in this example, 77.2. And now with the skeletal muscle mass, it's 58.6. So we can see that there's a slight difference because it's not including the organs. It's just biceps, glutes, triceps, etc. And then finally, body fat is repeated at the bottom. So you'll see in this example that we have this kind of slight D shape where the skeletal muscle mass in this graph is extended further than the body weight and the body fat mass. And that's essentially indicating that we have a lean, strong body type as this individual. So what we're really looking for in terms of overall health is if you find that you have a C shape where the weight and the body fat mass is greater than the muscle mass in this graph, then we really see that we have some room to improve our body composition and at least come to a center baseline where they're all equal, if not move that muscle mass to be a greater percentage in this graph as it's showing here. Then we come down to obesity analysis. So the first thing you're gonna see here is BMI. And I like to tell people that BMI was actually created by an artist. Uh, it really is a pretty poor metric when you have anyone who is athletic or has more muscle mass on their body. BMI will be a pretty inaccurate measurement. But for those of us who are carrying more weight, we can use BMI as a general understanding, but it won't really do that much for us. It'll just kind of confirm what we already understand. So for general, BMI is height divided by weight. That's it. It doesn't really get more complicated than that. And then from there, we go into percentage of body fat. So percentage of body fat is the ratio of muscle to body fat. 
It's not how much fat only you're carrying on your body. It's the ratio between muscle to fat. And what that means is if your muscle were to increase without your body fat moving at all, your percentage of body fat would go down. So most people think, and they'll look at body fat percentage and they'll go like, oh, it's how many pounds of fat I have in my body. Yeah, that's a a piece of it, but it's not the complete picture. The complete picture is the weight of muscle you have and the weight of fat and the comparison of the two. And finally, we have our segmental lean analysis. Now, I always like watching this guy because it shows how much muscle we have on each individual arm, leg, and torso. Um, something to note here is that the torso will also include your glutes. So the glutes are a part of the core. They're a part of the trunk. So when you look at the muscle mass that you might have on your trunk, the glutes are included. And that was always one of my questions. Something else to consider here, if you do have any sort of plastic surgery and or uh, you're holding uh, any sort of metal on your body, you might notice that you have that weight discrepancy showing up here or just have more weight in certain areas due to whatever uh, prosthetic or plastic surgery that you might have had. And then finally, depending on the type of machine or in body you're using, you might see a comparison chart at the bottom that helps you to see how you're improving or moving towards or away from your goals. And then the very last thing, and perhaps the most important for us is our basal metabolic rate. So the basal metabolic rate is the rate that we are using calories or energy to sustain our organ and muscle function while at complete rest. I like to call this like if you were essentially sick in bed and you were just rolling up to get like a Gatorade and then going back to bed and just watching movies all day, your BMR would be what you would need to consume to just maintain your current organ and muscle function. So your BMR is directly related and linked to your muscle mass. It literally requires all of your body's energy to maintain the muscle that it's carrying on its body. Zero energy to maintain fat aside from just carrying the weight of it on your body. So when you're doing the in-body scan over time and you see an increase in muscle mass, you're going to notice a pretty cool thing. When your muscle mass increases, your BMR is going to increase. And that means that you get to eat more fuel and your body will effectively metabolize more. So this is really the power of having something like an in-body scan. So we recommend doing this if possible once a month, uh, sharing it with your coach or with your group. And that's about it. It's a powerful tool and we can't wait to see what yours looks like.